Hello, good people of the internet. John Perry here with Stated Casually. While many people in this good world were stuck reading the news articles about Donald Trump's vacation plans, I managed to gain access to a new article in the journal Science Advances. It wasn't all that hard to do because the article was free. In fact, the entire journal of Science Advances is completely open access. You can read the entire thing for free whenever you want. But the article of interest here is about what could be considered the world's smallest man-made machine. Now, some of you are probably here because of the thumbnail that made mention of the possibility of tiny killer robot horseflies. Now, don't worry, I will get to that in a moment, but first let's look at what was actually invented by these researchers and published in the article. What this team did, and by the way, these researchers are at uh, University of California, Irvine. They're part of the Castle Center, Chemistry at the Space Time Limit. What they do is they specialize in molecular imaging. They invent new ways to take better pictures of atoms and molecules. Over the past few months, I've become very familiar with their team because we're creating a series of animations together for Stated Clearly about the fundamentals of chemistry. What is an atom, what is a molecule, and what is a chemical reaction? I'm very excited about the series. In the paper that they just published, what they have done is they have taken a single molecule of carbon monoxide and they have transformed it into an electrometer. Carbon monoxide, of course, is that gas that your car produces when you're burning fuel. And it's, it's the bad one. It's the one that if you breathe in too much of it, it will kill you. They have taken a single molecule of this, a single gas molecule, one oxygen and one carbon, and they have turned it into the world's tiniest electrometer. Now, some people might take issue with me calling this the world's smallest machine, because in order for this machine to work, it has to be attached to a scanning tunneling microscope. And a scanning tunneling microscope is pretty big. It's about the size of the motor in a Ford Focus, roughly. But even if you only want to consider this to be the world's smallest sensor or component, it is still an absolutely spectacular breakthrough in the world of nanotechnology. Probably the most spectacular thing since IBM figured out how to use single holmium atoms to store data. And just to put things into perspective, even though carbon monoxide is two atoms, it's one oxygen atom and one carbon atom stuck together in a molecule, it's still significantly smaller than a holmium atom. In fact, by mass, a single holmium atom is about six times larger than a molecule of carbon monoxide. This is a huge deal, and what I want to do here is explain to you how the carbon monoxide sensor works, but first, I think it's important to kind of explain why this particular sensor is so significant, so useful. Right now, for the most part, all of the circuits inside of your computer or your cell phone are made from bulk materials. Manufacturers will take chunks of copper and fiberglass and silicon, and they'll use a series of different mechanical and chemical processes to carve those down into the circuits that we use inside of our computers. That's how things are made. And we can actually get those circuits extremely small. I mean, they're, they're microscopic, but they're still much larger than they could be if we were building circuits atom by atom instead. Now, for a long time, researchers have been interested in something called molecular electronics. What they want to do is study different molecules and use them to reinvent things like the transistor and the diode and the capacitor, all the different parts that are inside of a computer. They want to reinvent those as single molecules. But in order to do that, they need extremely detailed information about the electrostatic fields of different molecules. They need to be able to study molecules, understand their electrostatic fields, and choose which ones would be best to build these different components. This is just one of several problems that they face, all of which need to be solved, but with this knowledge, they could build computers that are far smaller than our computers are today and far more efficient. They could build them so small, in fact, that you could fit them inside the head of a killer robot horsefly. You know, if someone wanted to, I'm not saying they will, I'm just saying, I guess it could be possible. The carbon monoxide sensor invented by Junhee, Ara, and their team, it can be used to map out the electrostatic field of a wide range of other molecules. And it does this at ridiculously high resolution. They call the process TERS MFM. That stands for Tip Enhanced Raman Scattering Molecular Force Microscopy. The process takes advantage of two different facts. First of all, the positive parts on a molecule are attracted to the negative parts 
on another molecule. So opposites attract. Secondly, the bonds inside molecules, like the one holding the oxygen atom and the carbon atom together in carbon monoxide, act like springs. Molecules constantly vibrate, and they can be stretched out. To map out the electrostatic field of a molecule of interest, first, you take a scanning tunneling microscope and absorb a molecule of carbon monoxide onto the tip of its scanning probe. Then, you take a gold plate and absorb your molecule of interest onto its surface. Finally, have the probe scan the surface of your sample. When absorbed to the probe, the oxygen end of carbon monoxide has a slightly negative charge on its tip. When hovering over a positively charged section of the sample molecule, carbon monoxide stretches and its vibration slows. Remember, opposites attract. When hovering over a negatively charged section of the sample, carbon monoxide contracts and its vibration speeds up. Like repels like. During the scan, a laser is repeatedly fired at the carbon monoxide, allowing us to read the speed of its vibration throughout the scan. With a little bit of math, the data is mapped onto the pixels of a picture, and voila, we have a near perfect map of our molecule's electronic properties. With this information, in the future, engineers should be able to reinvent all of the components that we currently have inside of our computers at the scale of individual molecules. Now, for those of you that really know your physics, you might be wondering, how on earth have these scientists managed to read a single molecule of carbon monoxide with a laser? The wavelength of light is huge compared to a single molecule. For details, see the papers linked in the video description. It's amazing what they've managed to do here. Ten years ago, we would have thought this to be completely impossible. But one more thing before I go. The team that invented this TERS uh, MFM, <laughs> They also put together an educational video game about how atoms and molecules interact with one another. And I highly recommend if you are an educator or if you just want to learn like some basics about chemistry, check out this game. It's called Bond Breaker. Here's the website where you can get it at. The game is completely free to use. You can use it on your computer or on your cell phone. It was produced as an education tool with a grant from the National Science Foundation. I've got a link to it in the video description. It is pretty dang spectacular, so check that out. Until next time.